Bow hunting doesn't have to be so complicated. I love bow hunting and the challenge that it provides. It's early October. My freezer is running empty. The goal here is to fill the freezer, get meat, because that's what my family eats on year round. I love to know that I'm providing for my family and feeding my family. One of the things I like to do this time of year is I love to go stack up does before I really start trying to chase after any bucks. My name is Will Cooper. I'm blessed to get to do what I do every day. Bow hunting doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be so complicated like a lot of people make it out to be that you see on YouTube and you just see all across multiple platforms today. I'm actually going to take a bear archery species EV ready to hunt package and show y'all how easy it is to take a bow like this, set it up how you want to have it set up. Now Trophy Ridge and Sick Broadheads really set us up with some upgraded gear. What normally comes with the Species EV package is a simple whisker biscuit, simple three to five pin sight. You get everything you need. And that's why I want to show y'all how easy it is to take one of these ready to hunt packages that Bear Archery provides that they've done for a long time, they've been doing and they're gonna continue to do, but I wanna show you how easy it is to take one of these bows, upgrade it with whatever you want, or you can take it as simple from the box, straight out of the box from Bear Archery, and if you know what you're doing, or you can take it to your local archery shop and you can get it set up, and in no time, you can get comfortable with shooting this bow and being out in the woods chasing after some white-tailed deer. You could take this bow straight off the shelf. It's a great, great price point if you're a new bow hunter, experienced, or you've got a budget and you just don't have the money to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a bow setup. And so what Bear Archery has done has built this bow right here for you to take straight off the shelf and go hunting with. If you've got experience from working on bows or you've worked in a shop or you've had some time behind the press, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do this at home or if you don't have that kind of experience, highly recommend taking it to your local archery shop and letting them get this thing set up for you. So this is the React Trio Pro. This is pretty dope looking site. I love the housing, the construction is like super durable. Looks like we have an unlocking mechanism there so you can dial dial the side to wherever you need really smooth lock it in really durable side I'm liking this I'm liking it a lot so here's a cool thing about this quiver Got an inside light to light up your arrows so you can see what you're doing in the blind, not blow everything up with the headlamp. And then when you're walking to the blind, boom. All right, so got the bow with the upgraded Trophy Ridge accessories on it. And so now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna put a new D-loop on. I will put a new peep on it. You can see they come standard with a tube peep. And so those are great for beginners, nothing wrong with those, but I like just a little bit different peep. So I'm gonna put that on this bow. I'm gonna get everything leveled up. I'm gonna get everything center shotted. I'm gonna tie some knock points, put my D loop on, get a peep leveled up and good. And then once I get all that done, we'll start shooting it and get her sighted in. All right, well, the Species EV is all set up, got it done, I tinkered, 
got her doped in, zero centered, zero shot it, she's good. And so I don't have enough room, what I just realized with this new Trophy Ridge site that I've got on there. The thing about this upgraded site is, it's got the bottom post that you're actually supposed to set your sight tape to and it starts at 40 yards and so I can only shoot 20 yards back here so tomorrow morning actually going to head out to the farm get this thing sighted in we're going to go check some trail cameras we're in Texas so we've got some corn feeders that we're going to need to fill some other things we're going to need to check out but I feel really good about this bow I'm really enjoying it love the way the arrows are shooting out of it and so I am going to get this thing sighted in tomorrow and then maybe tomorrow afternoon we'll go sit up in one of the stands we got set up and see if we can put some meat in the freezer. In regard to this hunt that I'm going to be doing, I'm taking this bow and my comfort range with, with new bows before I really get to shoot them consistently for you know a few months is I like 40 yards. That That's my comfort range is 40 yards and under. Really the max distance I'm going to shoot a whitetail at anyway. I mean, there might be circumstances or special cases where I might take a long range shot, but I have to be very comfortable with that bow. I have to be very comfortable in that situation and confident that I'm going to execute a clean shot on that deer and so the most important thing to do is you need to get comfortable with your equipment and you know whether that's shooting 30 yards 25 20 yards is your max you just need to get comfortable with that and know that when you get in the stand that you don't go beyond that range or try to test it because at the end of the day you just want to make sure that you're not shooting beyond that range and staying within your comfort zone so that you're making a quick clean and efficient kill shot All right, so one of the last things I'm gonna do before we head out into the stand is I'm gonna take one of these sick expandable broadheads. It's got a little over a two inch cutting diameter. And so what I would like to do before I go out is I like to shoot broadheads, make sure they're hitting right where they're supposed to, close to where the field point is. A lot of mechanicals should be able to do that. Otherwise, if you're shooting a fixed blade, you're gonna have to do some adjustments. But with this broadhead, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about anything at all. for us. 
wants then is money. These deer that we saw here was pretty much the last uh, any kind of encounters, true encounters we had with deer for quite some time. Texas is known as a target rich opportunity environment. You know, you never know what you're gonna see. A lot of people think that with Texas, everybody's hunting behind fences, but that's not the case here. We're hunting on a low fence property, free range, so these deer can come and go as they please. There's lots of deer, and I think the common misconception about Texas is you can go out, first sit, and your hunt's gonna be over. That was not the case for this hunt. Over the next three weeks, it was slim pickings. And what I mean by that is we either weren't seeing deer, the deer were too far away, we were seeing too young a deer, so yearling does, really small bucks, really young bucks. The hunting was tough. Between the full moon that we had, between super hot weather, and between all the acorns that we had hitting the ground, the hunting was tough. Over the next couple of weeks, I was not able to get it done. These deer just weren't on any kind of feeding pattern. The, the, the piece of property that I hunt in particular, it's kind of a tough piece of property to hunt. You can't get up in just any plain tree. I mean, I've got saddles, I can do all that, but it was tough to get in on these deer without really messing up the whole place because these deer, Pretty much bed in one specific area and if you go in and just try to go right in on them like that you could potentially blow the entire place up for the rest of the season so we played it safe and we just tried to put as much time as we could in the stand and eventually it pays off on an early november morning right before the rut starts to kick in here in texas This morning has been weird. We got here and we knew our wind was gonna be marginal like coming in here and then it started swirling and then we had it in our face and we had a lone doe come in and uh, I, I just couldn't get a good angle on her. And you know, we finally had good shooting light with her and she was just really wary and so she finally kind of meandered off and we waited a little bit and she came back. And she was still just real wary and so finally I got the full draw on her I think two or three times and then finally the third time she she presented me with a pretty pretty good shot she was slightly quartering too so I pushed it a little forward and she still dropped so her head was up waited a little bit took the shot so I don't see the luminoc right now but I feel good about the shot so this year has been a grind I mean October is just really weird out here we could never get anything consistent with these deer and so it just feels good to finally get one squeezed off on a doe. So we're gonna give her some time, watch footage, and
go see what the arrow tells us. All right, so we just made the shot. We got down out of the tower blind, and we're gonna go find this arrow and see what kind of blood we got. Feel good about the shot. We went and reviewed footage, and it might be just a couple inches back. Definitely think we caught kind of that lung liver area. So we gave her a little while. Let's go find that arrow and uh, see what we find next. All right, so we got blood right there already. I think she ran through there, didn't she? Oh, we got blood right there. All right, so one of the things I'm gonna do on this deer, you know, we feel good about the shot. We think it's a little far back. We got some dark blood. When we went back and looked at the footage, you saw her kind of turn. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually turn on the trace tool on hunt stand. That way, if she's not right in there somewhere, then we can definitely keep track of where we are and where we've been. Bleeding out both sides. You recording? So that is what you really want to see. Good bloody arrow. We had good broadhead deployment with these six. So feel good about that. Let's go find a deer. There she is. We got that doe right there. <laughs> she maybe went. She probably went about 60, 70 yards, so. So far back, but she was quartering too, man. That's a good size doe right there. Right where I put it. Man, she turned on us. Oh, feels good. Finally get a doe on the ground. Finally got some meat in the freezer. Hunting out here this year so far has been a challenge. You know, we started this early October. It's now November 3rd. You know, people talk about the October lull and things were just crazy out here. Deer were not patternable at all. We just pretty much had to put time in the stand and try and really just make sure we were in the right stand with the right wind, but winds have been crazy here. And we finally got in front of a good doe this morning. You know, we've had encounters with young bucks, really young does, yearling does, and so it feels good to just finally get a good size mature deer that we can put in the freezer. I've been running low on ground meat, been running low on back straps, so it feels good to get this doe. We're gonna take her back to what we call the cabana in a little bit. We're gonna go get her skinned, quartered, and we're gonna get this meat packaged up here before long. But in today's world, YouTube, archery seems to be really intimidating to a lot of new folks. And I've helped a lot of people get into archery. And the thing I love about bear archery is they make it where it can be easy. It doesn't have to be super intricate. It doesn't have to be this romanticized, sexy thing that bow hunting is. You can get as complicated as you want to, but we were able to take their ready to hunt package, the Species EV out. We did some upgrades, all thanks to Trophy Ridge. And we were able to do that with this bow and we put time on the stand and we got it done and we got beat in the freezer. It didn't matter if it had horns on it or not because at the end of the day, this is what we do it for. We do it for this because this feeds my family. We don't buy a whole bunch of meat from the grocery store. And so this is gonna help feed us, put some meat in the freezer, help manage the population out here a little bit so we can grow some bigger bucks. But at the end of the day, archery doesn't have to be super hard. We were able to manage our expectations and fill the freezer. So we're gonna go get her back and get her butchered up, field the table.
I think it's safe to say that the rut is starting to kick in here. We just killed this doe, and this young eight point was five, six yards from where we originally found her. And he's still there, like he doesn't even care. We've been struggling to get a deer in front of us for the better part of, you know, two to three weeks. And we literally had an eight point buck right there, young guy, five, seven yards. And it's insane, but that just goes to show how stupid these deer get this time of year.